Right now that we have a flavor of uh, the projects we did in the past year, uh, let's move on to today's agenda. Uh, we are happy to have uh, Samhita uh, here, who have we've partnered with to plan out this today's session as also tomorrow's session. Uh, so what they'll do is they'll give us an overview of how uh, social work and AI can work together, and more specifically, uh, what's the plan for this day, how the NGOs will come in the next session after lunch to present, and what expectations we should have from the rest of this workshop. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we won't try to keep you away from lunch for too long and make it brief. So uh, we are part of Samita Social Ventures. I have my two colleagues with me, Mr. Suyash and Mr. Saurabh, who I will introduce, and they will be part of the presentation. So uh, how we want to structure the presentation today is uh, we want to talk about what we do as Samhita a little bit and, and introduce ourselves, Good talk about a little bit about our good CSR technology platform, the need for AI in the social sector and, and the problems as NGOs see it, because we have been hearing from the technocrats, the technical perspectives, so the social perspective a little bit, and then how the, the breakout sessions and the presentations will be formatted. So. Uh, so Samhita is, is a social consulting uh, uh, organization. So by social consulting, I mean we want to maximize the CSR profits or the CSR impact, so to say, while helping different type of stakeholders. So our stakeholders are CSR companies, governments, NGOs, social um, enterprises, and academic institutions. So we were found uh, nine years now. So we were found in 2009. And uh, so far, we have our presence in 18 states via different projects we execute. And we have leveraged, uh, so to say, about four, 460 crores of funds uh, using our, our projects management and uh, research consultancy. These are some of our corporate clients who we have serviced in the past and are currently working with. Uh, and these are our partners. So they are different foundation academic institutions uh, and we're also working with the billing, uh, BMGF uh, very closely now on a WASH platform, which I'll be explaining in a bit. A little bit background on our leadership. So Priya is a CEO. Uh, sh uh, she leads the operation at uh, Samhita Social Ventures and uh, is an economics and a public policy graduate from Yale. Uh, that's Madhu who handles our uh, operations and all our project implementations with different uh, nonprofits. And uh, I'll look at our board members and advisors. So essentially, we, uh, we start with the CSR consulting because uh, along with our NGO partners who we all feel, and rightly so, are very good in their field work. They know what they want to do, what has to be done on the field. But when it comes to understanding uh, technology or how to pitch their ideas, or how to communicate what problems they are solving, they would require some help. Similarly, on the other side, the CSR committee guys would have, they have a mandate of 2% to give to work, so CSR funds. So usually when we meet clients, a lot of them are not nuanced to what exactly they want to do with their funds. So they tell us that, hey, this is my budget, and my core cause areas are typically education, health, and maybe you know women empowerment. Now you tell me what to do. So we probably have to draw our entire map, map for them, plan out their strategy, what are their missions, visions are, and how they can maximize their social return. So we work on CSR consulting. Uh, hand in hand goes the project management, the research work we do to make that happen, and knowledge and capacity building on both ends for the NGOs and for the CSR clients. Uh, we also have certain collaborative platforms for specific needs. For example, we had a collaboration with GIF where we worked to improve the capacity building of social enterprises to help them uh, make better insights, pre prepare better pitches, and match them with the impact investors in those fields. Uh, the next one was with uh, the International Financial Corporation, which works on clean energy. So the idea was that in India, a lot of rural villages don't have the supply of electricity to find out alternative electrical supply methods like solar lanterns or you know uh, uh, battery operated lights and make them available to these people and the most recently we are working on water sanitation and hygiene with the uh, BMGF uh, so this is a corporate platform uh, and part of this is a small ethnographic study and uh, a part of study we are doing in Chandrapur, which is a district in Maharashtra. So we want to understand what are the problems this faces because this is a highly challenging district. It has water shortage. It has uh, large uh, amounts of people who defecate in the open. So how we can prevent that? And we are uh, calling on innovators to work 
on the problems in this district because we feel if we can champion this district, we can overcome the most difficult mile, then we can apply the, those solutions, those innovations to the rest of Maharashtra. So that's our uh, aim for this platform. Uh, talking about our own technology pl uh, platform, since a lot of the, 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 our technocrats are here in this room. So it's a good CSR platform where we bring in all the stakeholders, that is your NGO, CSR, corporate uh, people, and, uh, no, and knowledge articles on, on one, one platform, to, so to say. So uh, we have about 3,000 social organizations registered on, on the platform, and we have leveraged 117 pro funds from that. So we have, it's essentially a marketplace where NGOs put in their projects and corporates put in their funding requirements and we help match them and also help them with different uh, products. And to talk about more of the platform, Mr. Suya should be the most correct person because he has that technology team. So I'll, you know, give my mic to Suyash. Uh, just to uh, make a brief, quick uh, uh, introduction about the five NGOs you're going to deal with in the problem areas. So uh, they are working on problems areas such as the mismatch between organ donation and the organ uh, demand. So that is one. The next, uh, people are talking about uh, how we can improve outcomes for agriculture farmers by in improving the crop yields. Uh, one talks about neonatal care and how we can improve uh, and uh, do a prescriptive analysis of which babies require more in medical intervention. Uh, the other one talks, talks about improving education outcomes in schools and on tobacco, uh, how to prevent tobacco addiction. So that's a quick overview of, of the different problems you're going to see in the next section. Uh, over to Mr. Suyash. Thank you. Just before getting into what platform is and not getting into details of that any which ways for the time, uh, there are a couple of brochures kept in there for those who are interested. I'm sure some of the NGOs uh, which, which we are working with, they are aware of anyways. Uh, but I think the purpose of this platform is actually how we bring in the technology for the, uh, the need of the ecosystem. That's, that's it. So if you look at, at the center, it's 117. That's probably a, a tip of the ocean kind of a drop of the ocean of the csr funding available in the uh, in the country which is coming in from law and for that we require obviously a scale if you want to scale up that uh, not for we but for the ecosystem then how we use the technology in place and that's where the good csr came into an action so basically we covered the whole life cycle of a csr i don't get into the details of that but essentially it's about why why somebody would like to do those kind of interventions, be it NGOs or the social sector guys or the corporates, how they want to do that, or before that, what exactly they want to do in all those things, and then how they want to do that. Now, in each of these places, we look at the data is important, the things about how they can make use of the data rightly, how they are able to use that data more effectively, how they are able to make that data transparently, and so on and so forth. That's where the technology, uh, we are trying to use it all across. Uh, it, it goes from the strat, and in, if I want to use the business kind of uh, things, which in the CSR lifecycle way, they look at the strategy, then the program design, actual implementation, and then going back to the actual impact analysis. So if I map back to the uh, professor, your uh, thing is in, we start with actually a data collection, help them decide or tell them this is where you can do it, kind of not predict, predict per se, but a little bit of prescription. And what we see is as more and more, you saw 3,000 uh, NGOs are already engaged on the platform and also about uh, more than 50 kind of corporates. But if as and, as and when more and more people can start coming, we will be able to make more insightful uh, kind, kind of uh, prescriptions and all those kind of things. And towards the end also doing an impact analysis and monitoring and reporting. Kind of thing. So that's, that's where the, uh, things helps but we are more like an ecosystem builder kind of a thing and hence we we also beyond the technology technology just a part of it we do a lot of outreach we get into these kind of interventions because we look at it's more collaboratively building in fact the word samhita is actually about collective good so how we are doing it together kind of thing and that that brings us in this uh, and in that terms i think we keep on doing the uh, kind of surveys research which is also goes goes into the knowledge part of it so this is one of the recent survey that we did and uh, we can see it aligned with what we are trying to do here as in what the corporates as well as the ngos are trying to look at is obviously the fundraising the 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 money uh, money kind of resources it's their their effectiveness in terms of managing but ultimately that use of technology finding the right implementation partners they are also on the top of the things and so technology and in these days we found yes ai is something which is there 
In fact, uh, when we looked also at specifically to AI, what kind of expectations they are. And uh, these are something, uh, as in, we have five NGOs which are coming in, but this is more like a, the broader kind of an expectations which are coming. I just brought in here so that uh, it, it is in line with what we are doing, so we are good, feel good about that. But maybe we can look at how we take this forward and maybe keep assessing, are we actually meeting those needs of a uh, overall ecosystem? Now, to that end, I think I will just leave this further to uh, Saurabh, who will talk more about the breakout session and how the day is planned forward. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Sorry, this is an eye chart on this one. But I'll, I'll just put it simply. We, what we've done is we've partnered with NGOs, uh, not to use PowerPoint to tell you the bleeding obvious, but to use PPT. We've repurposed the term PPT. We've gone ahead and understood the process of the NGO. We've understood the practices that have been followed at the NGO space, especially from a data collation perspective, especially from a validation and a structuring perspective. And then finally, it pos looked at possible technology solutions that can come together. So in the second half of the day, what we're trying to do is showcase what's the problem statement and where do we see a probable association of an advanced technology like artificial intelligence that can be looked to marry about? Once this is presented, so it's more like a context setting, we will then kind of break out into brainstorming sessions where we will have the domain experts more from the uh, MSRL lab who will be then tagged into these NGO tables who will understand a little more in depth of how they kind of look at uh, data and what is the availability of information with them, what are the challenges and how they possibly want to use it. Come up with possible use cases and solutions which can then be presented in the first half uh, tomorrow. Right, so that's like the overall agenda and the framework.